hundreds of years ago, in 2003, Hasbro launched a line of building sets based on their Transformers brand. This line was called Built to Rule. Yeah, Built to Rule... Built to Rule wasn't good. So, let's never speak of it again, okay? Fast forward to the future, or the present, or if you're watching this video years from now, the past. Regardless, it is now 2011. Hasbro has once again decided to launch a line of building sets based on their Transformers brand. The result this time is Creo. And this, well, this is much better. I'd just like to point out that Creo is a building block set, not a Transformer figure. You build the alt mode, then you have to take it apart and build the robot mode, or vice versa. A little disappointing, I know, and I'll get into that in a little bit. First, though, I'd like to take a look at the lowest price point figures, starting with Optimus Prime here. Optimus shares a lot with his G1 counterpart, color-wise, and the fact that he's a semi-cab. He's also a good starting off point if you're not sure about the line, he's not expensive, and it'll give you a good example of what you're going to expect with all of the other sets. Next is Bumblebee. While no longer a Volkswagen Beetle, he is a compact car, and yellow. He's a little small compared to Optimus Prime, uh, but I think he works well, at least as far as the character goes. Bumblebee's also a good starting off point, but I would recommend Optimus Prime over him. Next I've got the two slightly higher price point figures, starting with Jazz. Jazz's overall shape and detailing remind me of his G1 figure, while the colors kind of harken back to his live action movie figure. The top opens and you can put a Creon figure in there. He's got a little Jazz license plate there and he has actual rubber tires. Fantastic. Finally, we have Mirage. Now, I think that Mirage here, above all the other figures I've got, harkens back to his G1 counterpart, at least in alt mode. It's pretty neat. The colors are spot on. We've got the 26 on the sides and in the front. He also has rubber tires, just like Jazz, and he's got a little steering wheel there, right behind his name plate. One of the things that I don't like about these sets is the fact that none of the figures that I have utilize all the pieces in both modes. At least in one or the other mode, there are some pieces left over that you just kind of have to babysit. Taking a look at the package that I have for the Jazz set, you can see all the pieces that aren't utilized in the vehicle mode. Of course, you've got the Jazz Creon, as well as the Driver Creon, both of which interact with the vehicle but aren't necessary. And then these pieces are what's left over, and they help to form the robot mode, including the head. I think that it's a little lazy for Hasbro to not have incorporated these pieces somehow so that each mode utilizes all the pieces of the set. Unfortunately that's the way that they decided to design them. Now let's take a look at the robot modes. I'll be back in just a minute. Two hours later. Yes, that's right. It literally took me two hours to take all four figures apart and put them back together again in their robot modes. Once again, let's start off by looking at Optimus Prime. He's a little lanky in his robot mode, and that makes him just about as tall as the next price point up Mirage. 
He looks pretty decent and has a very G1-esque head sculpt. Articulation is also pretty good on this figure. He's got hinges on his shoulders and elbows. His hips are on a ball joint. And so are his feet. Next up is Bumblebee, who's the smallest of the four figures. Not surprising since he's also the lowest price point. His head sculpt is very reminiscent of his G1 self, and I'm glad they went that way, rather than trying to reference the live-action movie version of Bumblebee. Mirage here looks just as good in robot mode as he did in vehicle mode. He's got just about the same articulation as Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, including the ball joints on his legs and feet. One pet peeve of mine is that he has no knee articulation, but hey, what are you going to do? Head sculpt is very G1-esque, although I think it looks a little bit like an Egyptian pharaoh. Finally, we have Jazz. One complaint that I have about this figure is that instead of molding him in a white plastic, they've gone for this shiny gray, which I think detracts a bit from the figure since they were so obviously going for a G1 look. Sadly, he's also, out of the four figures I have, the one who has the most car parts left over after building him into his robot mode. And that actually brings me back to my original complaint with this Creo line. In this day and age, it's not unreasonable to expect a company like Hasbro to be able to design a building set that lets you build a car that can change into a robot and then back again without having to take it apart. As they stand right now, these Creo sets are kind of a big step backwards from that expectation. But at the same time, they're also a big step forwards from Hasbro's previous attempt, and that means that they're a step in the right direction. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching, and I am out of here.